hosted by Mike, Hello. the big cheese. Hello, how are you? This is Mike. Hi. Hey, how, how are, are you? you? Good, how are you today? I'm all right, thank you. Uh, listen, it's, it's great to talk to you, and I have to tell you, the new record is unbelievable. You guys did it again. Oh, nice to hear. Thank you very much. This is a really big album, in my opinion. I mean, the last Viking, I mean, besides the story that it tells, just the music, I mean, mixed together with it, it just seems like a massive undertaking. Yeah, well, yeah, um, Toto and Alex uh, would have a lot to say about that because they're more um, responsible for the concept and music, but but that's definitely true. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect kind of concept because um, the life of the Hathada is so kind of unbelievable that uh, all these sagas and, and stories and everything, they make perfect kind of, <laughs> you know, setting for these different kind of songs and, and of course epic instruments and everything so yeah it, it was pretty a lot, a lot of work I can imagine I mean when, when you're presented with this material and you're going over it do you say to yourself wow like where do I begin <laughs> how do I start well yeah I mean I'm sure it is like that it's, it's uh, I think Alex already decided actually for this concept um, at the end of Sign of the Dragon Head. Uh, it's the last song, Waves of Euphoria, that all, already hints that what's coming next. So it was already there uh, back then. And then uh, they, they started the writing process pretty much, I think, already 2018. So it's been like in the process for a long time. True. You know, you've been in the band now for over four years. And it's hard to remember the band without you. And that's a good thing. Well, yeah, yeah. If if you think so, then yes, it's, it's yeah, it's just a different, uh, different kind of thing uh, with me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does, does it take a while to feel comfortable in in this situation where you're the new guy in the band and you know you want to make your mark and you want people to know who you are, but yet you also don't want to stray too far from what the band is already known for. Well, yeah, I mean, when I when I joined the band, I knew that I would have to come there as myself because I'm a completely um, different kind of person and singer and performer. So I knew that it would be different. But I also wanted to, um, you know, sing the songs, of course, as, as well as I could. And I, I, I don't want to, I know I can't sound like anyone else. And I, I think no one should either. So it was like, okay, well, I have to do it my way and then then hope that people will also like my version of the song that already existed, I mean. True. You know, when you listen to The Last Viking, there's a lot going on musically. I mean, the harmonies, the melodies, all the different layers of sounds that they place. Is all this planned out from the beginning or do you kind of like, you know, see how things sound and then add to it, take away from it? Or does everything kind of have a, a set place in time? Uh, well, again, I think so. So, and Alex would be best to answer this question. But, but of course, I see how they work, and and uh, and it's it's. Um, I think the the frame of the songs is there, and then then of course things get added to it, and and we try a lot of other stuff. We see what works, and and then of course we also have some guest musicians that bring their own uh, ideas sometimes that that then change something and you have to go oh actually that that sounds really cool so then we have to change a little bit of something again it's kind of like a um, yeah evolving process definitely yeah is it difficult to recreate the sound live i mean is it possible cuz you know there's so much going on and you can't possibly bring in all those musicians so are the backing tracks recordings? I mean, how do you make this all work live? Yeah, it's like with uh, many these uh, kind of bands that they they have uh, the backing tracks that run at the background that has all those uh, other instruments and choirs and stuff, and then we bring the you know the normal instruments, singing, uh, guitar, bass, drums, everything live. That's how it works. Otherwise, it wouldn't really be possible. True. One thing about the band is that, you know, you're always active. There's always material coming out. I don't think there's more than two years between a record. And in between that, there were singles and EPs that are put out. Is it important to keep the music in people's mind, to keep putting output out there so they know that the band is around? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's uh, good for us as well to, to keep uh, creating new things and, 
And, uh, and you know, sometimes you also have plans that then don't always go according to the plan. So then you have to change a little bit again. Uh, for example, now with the corona and stuff, we uh, definitely needed to change some plans. And, and like for Black Butterfly, we wanted that uh, for the little tour we did uh, with Sirenia at the end of the last year. Uh, we wanted something to be something new for people, something for Christmas. And uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, also when you do tours and you come back and you have that vibe, you, you bring the vibe back from the vibe and, and, and bring that energy into the recording. So it's good to have both going on. Yeah. Is, is there anything happening at all right now on the live front in Europe? I mean, here in the U.S., there's really no shows taking place. There's no concerts happening anywhere, big or small. Is there anything going on over there where you guys can get out and play right now to start promoting the record on the live front, or is it kind of waiting until 2021? Yeah, it is, it, it's not great here either. It's, it's Because it's difficult to plan anything, and you know how it is. You have to plan quite well in advance. And um, I think there were some bands doing some kind of very small – uh, weekend-based uh, shows uh, with limited uh, people and also some car shows and stuff and online, of course. But yeah, I mean, it, it is difficult at the moment. And our, our tour got already postponed now twice. And it should be next year, uh, October now. <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, that's a while. A lot of it seems like a lot of bands are going online and doing things virtually, putting on, you know, recorded shows, I mean, live shows, but through the internet and stuff. Is that something that they might be interested in doing if you can't get out on the road sooner or later? Well, I mean, yeah, of course, we're still thinking uh, would be great to maybe have something for the release, and and I think Alex already been in touch uh, with some people to see if that would work. So we we'll see. We we really try to make it happen. Yeah, you know, I would love to see a video uh, of this, uh, of the the album in its entirety, or all the stuff that you've done since you've been in the band. Is a video in the works anytime soon? Uh, you mean what kind of video? Like uh, a, like a live concert video? Uh, oh, live concert video. Um, well, I mean, uh, yeah, that would be great. It's it's. Uh, I think there's something coming with. Uh, a uh, live version of of from the 2016 Metal Female Voices, but uh, I'm not sure if there's a video actually involved. It's it's always requires a lot of planning to do that kind of stuff, but that would be great. I mean, it would be so cool to have the Viking ship and have the whole big show and then video that you know, like like uh, they did already in the past. So yeah, that would be would be a good idea. <laughs> That's great. Do you still have Angel Nation going on? Is it still happening? Well, yes, of course. I mean, it's always there. It's my my little baby. But I I wrote already a lot of demos and and yeah songs for the next album, and we were kind of in the middle of working on them. And then now uh, a lot of things happened, and and it's it's been very very difficult uh, to to plan anything and and stuff. But I really hope we find a way forward. Um, and uh, and meanwhile, I have some some ideas in my head, and I keep, you know, trying to think of ways to to make make something uh, happen. So we'll see. <laughs> uh, that that would be great. I mean, is it uh, is it hard to be just in one band today? If you want to be an active musician who goes out and plays live, do you have to have multiple bands or projects to make that happen, or can one band be enough, uh, you know, to keep you busy? Yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, busy, yeah, I'm sure. Of course, it can be. It's just, uh, um, yeah, it depends on the dynamic and how how it all happened and, and how, how it is for everybody. I mean, I think it's individual what everyone wants. Some people really want to play in multiple plan, uh, bands and some people want to concentrate on, on one. And, and for me personally, it's just uh, kind of two different sides in a way that, you know, like I said, Angel Nation is, it's my band, and I started it uh, already back in 2011, and it's based on my songwriting and my lyrics and everything. So it's it's completely kind of different uh, from Lead Size, and I like to keep both uh, both sides. It's, it's great to have that possibility. True. Is it difficult not being able to really write or contribute musically to Lee's eyes because the other two take over most of that? Where you know, like I said, the Angel Nation, it's all yours. I mean, but do you want to like share your ideas? with the band musically one day, or hope to one day? 
Christmas. I mean, I, I am already, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's always um, a matter of, of what fits on the record, what what fits with the concepts. And, and uh and i of course i already take part of uh you know backing vocal writing and i did the acoustic version of dark club empress i i played the piano and made like a little arrangement of that and i do bits and pieces but of course it's a difference yeah and and uh, and, and that's why i also like myself because it's it's a part of what my passion <laughs> Sure. Uh, is the band all together when you're recording, or does everybody do their own part separately from different places? We all are. We are all recording in the master sound studio, of course. Yeah, but uh, it, it doesn't mean that uh, we're always all there. It, it can be that, uh, for example, Yoris records drums when I'm not there, and and I do vocals when he's not there. But uh, at this time, actually, we were kind of locked down <laughs> on a lockdown in the studio. So we were there pretty much <laughs> over a month uh, all together. So it was actually quite cool. Yeah. What's the difference between like doing it on your own or recording, like you just did me for the vocals, the drummer being there for the drums. Does, is, there anything, is there anything missing from that where somebody's not there to say, hey, maybe we should change this or, or do this or do that? Is it, is it better to where everybody's together you know, listening to what the other person is doing to make contributions and maybe change things up? Or is it come later on and you have to go back in and redo a part because maybe something didn't work right or sound right when you did it on your own without anybody there, you know, seeing how it went out? Well, I mean, it's not like and no one's there. Uh, if I record my vocals and there's someone recording me, it's mostly Toso and, and sometimes Alex records me as well. And uh, we go through all the parts very, actually, we go into very small details before recording. So everything is kind of decided in a way how we want to do it. The same with drums. And then we do the recording. And even then, sometimes you go back because you want to change something. <laughs> so it is an evolving process. So. Yeah. Is there any one song that you had to do so many times that you just didn't want to do it anymore? Uh, you mean recording? Or, recording, yeah. Uh, recording. Um, you mean like a part of a song or? or yeah, a part of a song or any one song where oh, you just yeah. couldn't, get it, couldn't get it the way you wanted to. And you had to keep repeating it over and over again to get it the right way. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Yeah, there's always a few of those that you still think like, oh, God damn it, you know, uh, still not the way I want it. But you have to let go at some point and, and you know, just uh, be happy with what, what, <laughs> what's, what's there. <laughs> I can imagine. Hey, Lena, I'm not going to keep you. I know you're doing a lot of interviews today, and, and I appreciate you talk with me. The best of oh, luck with the record. Okay. It sounds great. And I hope you guys can get back out on the road again soon. It would be great to see you come to the U.S. and, and play live. Yeah, I hope so, too. And, and, and all the best there as well. I hope you're coping with the situation <laughs> somehow <laughs> there. Yeah, we're doing good. We're just waiting for the live music to start again. Oh, well, sorry, I didn't hear you now. I said we're just waiting for you to come in and play live for us. That's oh, all. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 